Energy converters are processes or um, machines that convert energy from one form to another. And the goal of an energy, energy converter is generally to maximize the efficiency of the transfer from one form to another. Um, gasoline, uh, the chemical energy in the gasoline, you're trying to convert that into kinetic energy in the motion of a car. You want to do that as efficiently as possible, but you've got all these different loss sources. Every type of conversion, when you compress the gasoline and ignite it, you have a chemical reaction. So you convert that, uh, that chemical energy into thermal energy, and that creates pressure, which creates fluid energy. And the fluid energy moves the piston, which creates kinetic energy, which rotates the cam, which converts it to rotational kinetic energy, which transfers it to other types of rotational kinetic energy, fighting through friction and misalignment the entire way, all the way down to the tires where you get something going in the other direction. 1% efficiency or less, depending on how you calculate it. Uh, not that great. All right. But the important thing is to know how the processes work, where the losses are when you do the conversion, because you want to maximize it. And if you don't know where you're losing it, you're never going to improve things. So first, let's start off making light. I'm taking electricity in here, and I'm converting it into photons and a lot of other stuff. There's some waste. It's not perfectly efficient. Now remember, the photons, they're moving out in all directions. So they're very intense here, but they drop off as they go further out because not only are they expanding in this direction, they're expanding in this direction too. So if I had a, a two centimeter by two centimeter window at a certain distance, well at twice the distance, it would be four centimeters by four centimeters. So instead of four square centimeters close, now it would be four by four, it would be 16 square centimeters. And so I drop off as the distance squared as far as my total flux received. If I'm three times further away, I'm receiving one ninth of the energy. Um, Jupiter is five times further from the sun than the Earth. Jupiter gets one twenty-fifth of the solar radiation that the Earth does for that reason. So let's do a sample calculation converting this into electrical energy into this. Now I need to tell you Again, about a radiance. We've talked about this before, but I'm going to remind you that irradiance is. So first, we should uh, I should remind you about irradiance because we're not just concerned about how much power the light's putting out. Uh, we're concerned about how it's spreading out too. So, how many photons per area? The irradiance is given by epsilon, and irradiance is power per unit area. Now, what else do we need? That's power out um, for a light bulb. These things are so much more wasteful now that if somebody has a good idea, and you see a little light bulb going above their head with an incandescent, it's probably not that good an idea. And this is hooked up to a, a supply. I'll just make it DC. All right, and so the power on the input side is the voltage input times the current input. And the efficiency of the system It's given by this Greek letter eta. Looks like an N that's drooling. And that's the ratio of the output power to the input power times 100%. So let's, uh, let's come up with an example.